Welcome to Storytime from Space, a project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. All right, hello everybody and welcome to Storytime from Space. Welcome wherever you are, whether it's at your home, in your school, in the library. Uh, you're most welcome here on board the International Space Station. My name is Serena Anand Chancellor. I'm one of the crew members on board Expedition 56. And today I am here in the beautiful cupola, which gives us a huge window to the Earth, as you can see around me. Uh, behind me, we've got a Russian progress vehicle. And you can see the Earth up above in the beautiful clouds. And today we are going to be reading Luciana Braving the Deep. So let's get started. <clears throat> Training to become an astronaut, to one day make it to Mars, was my dream. I can imagine it now. Me, Luciana Vega, the first person to step on the red dirt of Mars. And I was getting closer to reaching that goal. I was at a real astronaut training camp. The first few days of camp, I kept pinching myself because I couldn't believe I was actually here. For our first assignment, all of us campers had just been split up into teams. And I was paired up with my roommate, Claire, in the hydroponics lab. Hydroponics is where you grow plants and water. I was excited to do a hydroponics project, but not so sure about having Claire as a partner. Her dad is a big shot space inventor, and I sometimes got the feeling that she thought she was better than everyone else. But maybe working together in the lab, Claire and I could start to become friends. Claire and I ducked into the greenhouse, which was basically a large tent made from a semi-transparent plastic tarp. The greenhouse shelves were stocked with garden supplies and science equipment. Claire grabbed two official-looking lab coats from a hook and tossed one to me. I was pumped to work on the hydroponics lab. The astronauts in the International Space Station do hydroponic experiments while they're up in space, whizzing around planet Earth. And that's true, we do grow plants up here in space. In fact, my crewmate Ricky Arnold was just growing a calabasas plant the other day and was harvesting them to send them back down to the ground. On missions to Mars, astronauts will need to grow their own food for the nine-month journey to the Red Planet. So hydroponics is an important step in the future of space exploration. I opened a binder on the metal table in front of us that was titled Protocols and flipped to the page labeled Setting Up. I'm not used to following protocols, Claire said. She brushed her hair out of her face and put on a pair of lab goggles. I can usually just figure things out. Same with my dad. It's genetic or something. Ignoring her comment, I moved my finger down the list of materials. Well, when you're doing science stuff, everyone should follow the protocol. Even the astronauts on the International Space Station need to follow protocol. And they're some of the best scientists in the world. And that's also very true. We have procedures that scientists want us to follow exactly, step by step, in order to make sure the experiment works right. And if you skip ahead and just do what you think is right, you may mess up the entire experiment. So it's important to pay attention to instructions. I told Claire, I mean, if you just skip ahead because you think you know everything, you might miss something important, right? Immediately, I wished I hadn't said that. That came out wrong. I meant, it's okay, Claire said with a smile. I think I know what you mean. Maybe she did, and maybe I had to give her a chance. All of the other trainees at our camp seemed impressed by her. But I wasn't so sure she was the kind of crewmate I could rely on. But since we were roommates and teammates, I hoped I could. Okay, I said, returning to the list. We need the plant pillows, seeds, and a beaker filled with water. Have you ever used one of those turkey basters before? Claire asked me, inspecting a small glass tube with a rubber bulb stuck to the top. You mean a pipette? I asked. Shouldn't Claire, the hydroponics expert, already know what the tools are called? Claire squared her shoulders. Of course I know it's a pipette. I just didn't think you'd have any idea what I was talking about. I bristled, but decided it wasn't worth making a big deal out of it. We searched for our supplies in the cabinets and glass cooler in the corner of the greenhouse. I found a bunch of butter lettuce seeds, and Claire found the plant pillows, which looked a lot like the travel pack of wipes Mom always kept in her purse. What's in these anyway, Claire asked, squishing one of the pillows. I snapped on a pair of latex gloves. Stuff to make the plants grow, I guess. I picked up a pillow and peeked through the tiny hole in the top where we'd insert the lettuce seed. All I saw inside was darkness, but I could smell something earthy like soil or sand. It says, growth media made out of fertilizer and clay, she said, reading from the binder. She wrinkled her nose and tossed the pillow onto the table. Gross. 
What kind of hydroponics expert is grossed out by fertilizer, I wondered. I filled the beaker with water from a jug on the table. So you said you've done something like this before, I asked, like with your dad? Probably, Claire said, tearing open a seed packet, or maybe not, I can't remember. I eyed her. So maybe she wasn't an expert on hydroponics after all. Sometimes I garden with my mom, I said, but we do regular gardening in our backyard, so I'm new to hydroponics. Claire didn't say anything, looking at our next step in the protocol. Hand me that, she said, pointing to a styrofoam tray. I slid it over to her, and she dumped the seeds into it. We need to put three seeds into each plant pillow. She put on some latex gloves, and we got to work, dropping three tiny seeds into each pillow. Sarah, our camp counselor, pokes her head in. You two doing okay? Claire held up a seed with her gloved hand. Planting. Sarah inspected our setup. Good job, guys. Keep it up, and we'll be eating fresh butter lettuce salad for dinner in the underwater habitat next week. Really, I said, so fast? Yep, Sarah nodded. Hydroponic plants grow faster because instead of growing in regular soil, they get a mixture of nutrients just perfect for the plant. They don't have to spend time growing a big root system because everything they need is right there in the growth media. That makes sense, Claire said. There's no soil on Mars or on the space station, so astronauts have turned to hydroponics. You could grow a plant anywhere if you don't have to rely on soil, Sarah said. Boy, it would be delicious if we had a butter lettuce salad up here on the space station. Mm. Sarah watched us plant a few more seeds and then disappeared back out the flap door. Claire and I continued working silently. I wanted to ask her a thousand questions about what it was like to be Lance Jacobs' daughter, wondering what life would be like if my mom or dad had decided to be a space entrepreneur like Lance Jacobs instead of a nurse and a math teacher like my parents. Did they live in a huge mansion? Was she going to be the first girl to Mars? Did they eat space food for dinner and fly famous astronauts around in their helicopter all the time? Because that's probably what I would do if I were her. If I had a helicopter, I'd fly it right to Chile, I accidentally said out loud. She looked up from her plant pillow. We did that once. We took our jet, though. My dad had something to do in the Atacama Desert. I dropped a seed thinking about my family, and it skittered across the table. Abuelita, my grandmother, lives there, and also some cousins. I never get to see them. Actually, maybe I didn't go to Chile that time. I probably had homework or something, Claire said. She finished her planting and pushed the styrofoam tray away. So she hadn't been to Chile? Or had she? What was the deal with this girl? I read the next step aloud. Add 100 milliliters of water to each plant pillow. Claire held up the pipette. Turkey baster thingy. She submerged the glass tube into the beaker, squeezing the bulb and drawing in water until it reached the little line on the tube that read 100 milliliters. And then she squeezed the bulb hard, squirting the water into one of the pillows. She handed it to me. Your turn. I moved the plant pillow closer to me and sat down on a stool so I could really concentrate. If we were on the real space station where water and supplies were limited, one mistake and an entire experiment could be ruined. At first I squeezed the bulb too hard and sucked up too much water. Claire laughed, but in a nice kind of way, not the making fun of me kind of way. I tried again, this time going slower, and managed to get it right. Claire and I took turns adding water to the rest of the plant pillows. Following the last steps of the protocol, we carefully loaded our plant pillows into the growing tray in the corner of the greenhouse. Then we put on protective sunglasses and flipped on the panel of lights, bathing ourselves in the glow of the red, blue, and green LEDs. Awesome, Claire said, and it was. We started cleaning up, and I peered at Claire as she dumped the water out of the beaker and placed the glass tube from the pipette into the biohazard bin. I was having a hard time figuring out exactly what was real and what was not real with Claire. It seemed as though when Claire wasn't bragging, she was making up stories. I took a breath. We are on the same team. We are roommates, I reminded myself. Sarah said we'd be family by the end of the week. I imagined what it would be like to spend months with the crew on the International Space Station or on a journey to the moon or Mars. On long missions, your crew kind of becomes like your space family. And that's very true. The, my crewmates up here, Drew, Ricky, Alex, Oleg, and Sergey, they are my space family. We are one big family here on the ISS. They're the people you rely on for everything. And everyone plays an important role in making the mission successful. I still didn't feel like Claire was being 100% honest with me all of the time, which made it hard to trust her as a crewmate or imagine her as my almost family. Partnering with her in the hydroponics lab was fine, but what would happen if we were in a dangerous situation together, such as a nine-month trip to Mars, or even being partners on a scuba dive, which was our next assignment here at the training camp? 
Was Claire someone I could count on? Thank you for joining us today for Storytime from Space. Again, this is Luciana, Braving the Deep by Erin Teagan. Welcome to our space home and our space family up here aboard the International Space Station. I'm Serena Ani Chancellor from the Cupola. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us for Storytime from Space. We hope you enjoyed our story today from the International Space Station. We hope you'll join us again soon for another book reading or for one of our science experiments. Until next time, we look forward to reading together again soon.